Hello YouTube, Rita Math here, and welcome back to Hack Mutt. Today we're going to be taking a look at some of the things to do on the other side of the VLAN. Now, Hack Mutt is a bit of a sandbox multiplayer game, so it's understandable if you get to this point and you're wanting for direction a little bit. Uh, you're kind of encouraged to just play around and look for commands and figure out what the commands do and then take it from there. Uh, but, of course, I've been playing around for a little bit, so we're going to kind of jump ahead of some of that. And one of the things that you could be doing is checking out the various scripts that you have access to now. And if we go into the full sec scripts, and of course, we've got full sec, high sec, low sec, well, mid sec, not in that order, uh, and null sec scripts. Uh, so, of course, these full sec scripts should be relatively safe. And what we're going to find here is a listing of some player created scripts, but also a few NPC created scripts. And those are going to be the ones that we're going to look at first. I suppose I should also mention we're currently logged in as my alt character, Blue. Uh, there's a reason for that. Blue is sort of as pure as the virgin snow, um, uninitialized and without having entered any chat channels. Uh, it also means that his auto-completes uh, only have in them the things that are in these lists. Uh, as you can see, auto-completes were added there. Um, so what do we want to do? We're looking for one that's an NPC. And... Uh, you know who I like? I like Wayland. Um, that's typed backwards. So we head into the Wayland dot out. Um, I believe like an outward facing kind of console for it. We're going to get the Wayland Utami public information script. He's re refrain from engaging in criminal activity. Of, of course, we'll, we'll, we'll totally not be engaging in any criminal activity here. Now, it gives us two commands, but we don't know how to use those just yet. Uh, so if I give it like a blank parameter with just an open and closed bracket, I'm going to get back the help dialog that I can specify with command, although it's a little bit corrupted there. Uh, one of post, mission, or I can also access the directory with people. And ultimately, that's what I want to do. I want to find people. I'm kind of scraping for dead accounts again, similar to what we did with the help desk. Uh, but we're not going to be able to do that. Well, actually, let's just jump right to it. If we try to go straight to command people, we're going to get an error message back letting us know that we lack the password. There we go. No password specified. And again, uh, the game's only been out a couple of days. The server is still... Uh, kind of being tweaked and adjusted. So just keep that in mind if some of the commands seem like they take a little bit of time to respond. All right, so we need a password for people. We don't have that password yet. So instead, let's poke around elsewhere. Um, one of the things we could do is check the Wayland Utami mission statement. In the mood to put something a little different in your stomach, come out to Wayland Utami's. The freshest raw food in town. We are calling this strategy plan to win and we will continue to strive to deliver on this promise now and of course one of the bytes is corrupted if, if I just refresh uh, this command I'll get different corrupted bytes you can always use that if you're uh, trying to decipher what a word was and you're missing like a vital character or something like that we're gonna go ahead and place plan to win up there in our scratch and then and then we're gonna take a look at the posts so the, that plan to win, ultimately that's going to be uh, the password that we end up using. So, you know what, actually, let's just step by step it. I don't want to jump ahead and it's a, let's kind of uh, reveal maybe like the, the process that I think you would go through uh, when trying to figure this out for yourself. Uh, so, if I try just people and plan to win, I'm actually, I think, going to get two different errors here. First of all, no password specified, but like I totally put a password right there, right? So let's try something that's not password. Uh, instead, if we shorten it to pass, 
we're gonna get authenticated. Now it could be a few different things, just like those unlock, open, and release commands. The password can use things like password, pass, or just the letter P. Uh, in this case, it was pass. But now that we've entered the password, we've authenticated, but we still don't have a member list yet. And the reason for that is we need to specify a project in order to get its member list. So we're gonna need one more variable there. And we're now in the posts for the company. Uh, there's a lot of really silly stuff in here. It, it's kind of interesting. Uh, I would totally recommend like reading over all of this to get sort of a better idea of the world that you're in um, as, it, as it does kind of talk about those quite a bit. Uh, but what we're looking for specifically is a project name, right? So if you see right here, Cord Train of project, project name has come clean about the cancellation of his pro product. Uh, we just can't justify the cost, he said. Now there's actually two things that are interesting here, uh, both Cord Train and his project name. So I'm actually gonna grab both of those uh, real quick. Although I really just need the project name and Cord Train's name. And you know what else? I actually don't need plan to win anymore because I, I know where that goes and I've already kind of pasted it in this command. Now, uh, one thing I will say is one project is never enough. We're gonna go ahead and take a couple of these. And the reason for that is uh, this is a multiplayer game and we're gonna get a member list, but there's no guarantee that it hasn't been compromised by other players yet. And we might just get a bunch of dead accounts that have already been cracked into. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is just kind of go through here grabbing a handful of different member lists to uh, just ensure that I, I find at least one successful thing and I don't have to like backtrack to this step again later. So uh, that should be plenty. Let's start with that last one there since it's still in my clipboard. And we'll go command people, password plan to win, and the project retrieved out of the post. And from that, we're gonna get our list of dead user accounts. Now, what we can do with these is launch them just like scripts with no parameter just yet. Uh, of course, I do need a hard line. Um, well, I'll just, I'll do it the old fashioned way for right now. Uh, we're gonna kernel dot hardline into this. One thing that I do kind of want to show off here is uh, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this the hard way at the moment. And there is an easy way, and we're going to get to the easy way by the time we're done here. Um, I'll show you guys what it looks like to take all of the shortcuts effectively. Uh, if this seems maybe a little daunting or a little bit too slow. Okay, uh, access denied by a core lock. We haven't seen a core lock yet. They're a little bit of a pain. Um, if you play it, like, again, for this first encounter, if you just give it something like an unlock command, that's not gonna be enough. We gotta give it a correct color name now. Now, I'm, of course, a big fan of red, but that's not right, so we'll go with orange. Come on, man, I'm on the clock here. Not the correct one, we'll give it yellow. We'll prep green. Oh, there we go. All right, so green is the correct color, but required unlock parameter of color digit is now missing. So we need some digits here. So we're gonna go color digit zero. We'll prep one. Not the correct checksum value. We'll get ready with two. We'll get ready with three. We'll get ready with four. We'll get ready with five. Six. All right. Five was correct, but we've now been denied access by an easy 40 line. We're gonna do something like unlock, open, release, ah. Uh. Just not fast enough. 
This is actually, I mean, there's four different things to crack. Uh, a fairly lengthy lock, if truth be told. Um, we could have just found, you know, another, oh, it's protected by an easy 21. There's a command, and there you go. We didn't, though. I don't actually know how loot is generated, so I am i can't say whether or not like this means that there's something better behind it because uh, it's harder to crack. I, I don't know if that's true or if the, the loot table and the complexity of uh, the crack are independent of one another. Uh, but since our, our kernel dot hardline ran out, we're going to need to redo it and it's already reset, which is awesome. Now, we don't have to start from scratch, uh, obviously, right? Like we're we're almost there. We're halfway there. We're we're some degree of there. Uh, I'm really hoping that the uh, the prime digit is the last thing that we're gonna need. Okay, and I went ahead and entered that so that it would be uh, just ready right away. And I probably could have gotten this on the first try had I uh, just not experienced as much, like quite as much lag as I did. Uh, so, if you're unfamiliar, of course, um, it's prompting for a prime. So we're going through and we're doing uh, prime digits here. Uh, prime numbers, of course, are numbers that are only div divisible by themselves, and uh, the number one. I'm doing this by memory, so please bear with me if I get any of them wrong. I am, I'm red at math. I don't know if that means that I'm good at math. I'm some, certainly something. Uh, seven, I'm just sort of running through numbers here in my head until I encounter ones that I don't immediately know the divisible, the, uh, uh, the factors of. There we go. Um, 43? 47? Oh, 43. And I can say one thing. Alright, so we did crack into it. We received the 50,000 uh, GC from that abandoned script. And I'm actually going to go ahead and kill this hard line as a uh, I don't think we're going to have enough time to get anything more out of it. You can do that a little bit early by DC truing off of it, and it'll give a disconnect right away. Like so. Now, a couple of important pieces of information that I just gleaned from there. One, the lock complication, complexity, however you'd like to put it, and the reward I don't think they're tied together because I have gotten way better rewards off of way easier locks before. 50,000 GC, I would almost say, is at the low end. Um, I think the high end is a little bit closer to the 200k mark, but they're usually right about in there. And uh, that's not the only rewards. We can also get system upgrades from doing so, uh, you know, equipment that allows us to do stuff. I don't think I have any system upgrades, so I don't know what this command is actually going to show us. It's going to show us that I'm not initialized yet. But, you know, the, the access log transfer things and all of that, uh, those are going to be those types of upgrades. You can get those as loot as well, and sometimes they're a lot more valuable um, than the amount of cash that you're getting. Now, in addition to these sort of level one dead accounts that we're breaking into, uh, there are actually more valuable accounts, and we're not going to break into one of those, but I just want to kind of give you an idea of how that works. So, in addition to Wayland Out, there is also, um, these are in here as autocompletes because I've seen them before. Um, they're not all going to be valid or valid right now. Um, for example, we just used Out. So I'm expecting pub info is not valid, exactly. Um, and then these are all rotating, uh, at least once a day, maybe more frequently, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, so one of these two is going to be correct. It's either currently member access or it's currently members only. And we'll find out in just a second. Okay. 
It's not member access, so it is members only. Uh, this would have been another script that we could have seen um, in like just the list of scripts. If we try to access the members only area of Wayland Yutani, uh, we get back that if you're in the mood to put a to put something a little different in your stomach, come out to Wayland Yutani, the freshest raw food in town. There's some really excellent writing in this game, by the way. Uh, if you're not familiar, the Wayland Yutani. Uh, Corporation is a reference to the movie Alien slash Aliens slash Aliens 2, 3, 4. I don't know. They fight some predators. You get the idea. It's a whole movie franchise. And they're a corporation in that. Kind of a big evil conglomerate. Uh, but in this game, they make the freshest raw food in town. So they're basically a sushi place. Now, we need a username to access this. And we saw a username earlier. If you'll remember... Uh, cord train here. Whoop, that was not at all what I meant to do. Cord train here. Ugh. Control C. There we go. Uh, cord train here was the one uh, stating that this project was going under. And if we try to use his login information, I'm expecting it to be valid. And indeed it is. So we can get into the Wayland yutani member panel this way. And the Wayland yutani member panel has a whole new set of games and challenges. Uh, I'll be 100% honest, I have not cracked a single user in the members only section yet. I don't understand the puzzles. Uh, they're like over my head. I'm getting there. I've made progress, but we're not there yet. Um, but you can use this to... Uh, what I'd really like to show off is actually the fact because I think it is hilarious. So, for instance, you can look at the frequently asked questions and it'll give you some uh, useful hints about other commands that can be used. But more importantly, the questions and answers in here are just amazing. Question number one, can I get a refund? Select orders can receive a refund with mitigating circumstances. My significant other has recently fallen into a comatose state after a meal. What should I do? Uh, they are most likely having their post-meal siesta, trademark. Uh, get them a comfortable blanket. Why is my stomach itchy? Uh, fresh raw food can take a bit more work to digest. Your stomach will stop itching once you take your post-meal nap. Again, alien references to horrible things gestating inside you. Uh, and then, of course, more you know relevant to the gameplay itself. How do I return my order? There's a customer service command. Uh, you can see your order with orders. You can change your settings using the settings command. Uh, you can see QR codes that were used to place my order with order QRs. And where is your raw food sourced from? We pride ourselves in our secrecy. We've worked hard to bring you a meal that's out of this world, trademark, and hope you enjoy it as much as we enjoyed harvesting it. So yeah, uh, the Wayland Yutani Corporation is real, real fun. So that is the basics of, right, like I, I kind of skimmed over maybe some of these steps. So the fact that we did get a, uh, a member list that was quite a bit longer, you know, than just the one that we hacked into, we could spend quite a bit of time hacking through all these guys and, and getting uh, quite a few rewards. But what I'd like to do now is show off a little bit more of the multiplayer that is available in Hack Mud. So right now we're on user blue. I'm going to go ahead and switch over to user red. And while user blue has the 50,000 uh, GC that, that he just got, uh, user red is gonna have a little bit more, probably to the tune of like 7 million, if I had to, to recall. We'll, we'll find out shortly. There we go, 7,661,000. That's pretty nice. Uh, I did not get all of that by doing what I just did though. So, multiplayer. Uh, first of all, chats. Dot... Chats.join. I think I actually left this channel, so I want to get back into it. This is the uh, like public chat area that you're in whenever you uh, you join. Yeah, indeed. So um, this is zero 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 zero, and people are talking pretty frequently in here. Not to mention uh, you're getting like a lot of the 
basically sign in and sign out commands because uh, people are, are just in it naturally whenever they enter the game. One of the other things that you get from being in it though is the fact that people will post scripts that are uh, not particularly safe to run and your autocomplete is real dumb and it will just take those and be like, hey, this is something you clearly want to autocomplete. So on red, instead of being able to type something like that and just get to my scripts, uh, my autocomplete has all these other things and they're designed with like script.fullsec is designed to basically catch you out in a typo. Um, the, and these are designed by other players, right? Like th these people uh, have made these scripts. These scripts do malicious things such as steal all your money or give away upgrades or reveal your location, um, like your network address location, all of those types of things. Uh, and they're, they're dangerous and you're walking on eggshells um, to a certain degree. Now, don't get me wrong, it's not like it's unfun or anything like that, but it punishes those that make mistakes. Now, not everybody is evil. Remember that script stop full sec that we ran earlier? We're gonna find an awful lot of people that have done some very nice things in here, and some of them, and now this is an activity I leave up to the viewer to decipher what is and isn't safe. Um, don't take this as me vouching for any of these, but uh, some of these people I do know are rather altruistic. DTR is one of them, and he hasn't gone off the rails or uh, lost his mind or anything like that as of this recording. Again, I can't, I can't say I, I endorse any of these for the future. But one of the scripts that DTR has written is a harvest underscore T1. Now, remember all that like stuff that I was doing in order to find a member list and get lists of users that I could then hack into? Well, DTR has uh, broken that down into a science, and that's a script right there. And if it's already been breached, you can input skip true, and it'll get removed from a database that he's created, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So um, that's that's pretty straightforward, right? Well, it gets. Um, even easier than that. Um, Asian, for example, has created this handy dandy unlock script, and we can point it at any tier one script that we want, and it'll just breach it for us. So, why don't we show off that? Also, uh, in order to hardline, <laughs> mainly because, so even kernel is not safe, all right? There, there are people that have created look alike scripts there. Uh, so it's dangerous to type everything. Uh, in the game, basically. But you can write your own macros, and in order to hardline, I can just backslash HL, and then I will never typo that command, and it's totally fine. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and use that to show a more efficient way of doing everything here. All right, we got our IP address to jack in. And if we do the uh, unlock script here combined with that script there, and then we just bounce to another harvest, and then we remove that there. And we are, of course, still experiencing just a little bit of lag. Sometimes uh, these come back right away. Uh, other times it can take them a minute well, not a minute, but a few seconds or so. Um, like there. So uh, that unlock script just uh, harvested 139,000, as well as a warn message um, upgrade that we would be able to use. Uh, unfortunately, this not my harvest command came back with anything. Might have timed out. So there we go. We'll rerun it. We'll actually... Uh, I'm back right away. Oh, we actually got back a uh, second one there. So yeah, it's it's passing some uh, some commands like after I send them. Basically, it's realizing that I have sent something else to the network and I'm getting the response. Again, um, game's been out for like three days, so there is a little bit of lag seen there. And 
then it's just, if you just keep in mind what you've already done, like I said, eventually it'll it'll catch that up. Um, so if I try to harvest again. There we go. I got two of them back that time, and then there my unlock finally went through. Um, and I do want to kind of get through this. I'm probably not doing it as as efficiently as I could be, um, but I do want to get through it kind of efficiently to at least show up a little bit of what is possible due to uh, the, the help of other players and people that have scripted things for it. Alright, that'll do it. So, uh, that was one, two, three, four... Four. So I got four successes in that same amount of time. So that's one like every 30 seconds or so, which is uh, is not bad. Um, I actually think maybe because of the lag right now, but I actually think the most efficient way to do this is to actually combine these two strategies. So what I want to do is get uh, back above this lock right there is to manually hack into the companies in order to pull project lists out of them and then input this only into the unlock command uh, so that you don't have to bounce back and forth while you're actually trying to do the hacking uh, because you're on a timer and it's inefficient to have to hack back or jack back into the uh, the hard line over and over again all those types of things so uh, what you're seeing here is two players, um, even though you know I'm the only one in front of you, but two players kind of coming together to bre breach the PvE elements of the game in a much more efficient fashion. Um, you'll also notice this 10,000 GC that's being transferred away, and the reason for that is the maker of this script is charging for its use, because I made 130,000 off of it, they're getting you know less than 10% uh, is, is kind of being siphoned off. Um, it's a flat 10,000 each time, so the more I make, the more I get to keep, etc., etc. Um, and that that's part of the emergent sort of MMO-ness of the, the MUD, right? The multiplayer in multi-user domain. Um, there's more to it than that. There's effectively... Well, let's show something off real quick. Markets. It is markets. No, it is market. Market. I'm, I'm getting nervous about the idea that just like any time I type a command, it's got to have S at the end of it, right? Because the ones that don't are always fake. Um, so if we, we take a look at the market, we're going to see, and I foolishly didn't uh, include a parameter, so it didn't give me anything. But uh, if we market up browse, we're going to see like, some of the stuff that's available here. And this is actually like stuff up for sale by other players. Like I have items that are listed in this stuff that I've gotten from loot um, and then listed in the market in order to make money. Uh, we're not seeing half the list. Uh, it eventually like it, it doesn't scroll forever and you should use some um, filters in order to see the specific parts of it that you might be looking for kind of thing. Um, which is why we don't see any of the like 25 million down here. Like it's actually kind of amazing that the entire list is filled up with stuff before it hits uh, 24k. Um, as you can see, there's like some very cheap locks down here uh, that are very basic and people are selling them for almost nothing. Um, you will also see, it's actually browsed by like, I want to say class. Uh, if I try to browse by class scavenger. This is something talked about a little bit in the tutorial, but not really expanded much on. But effectively, there are, you know, four sort of archetypes, uh, four classes within the game. You can see there are 25 million uh, transfer, transfer version one. <laughs> Thanks, Shaw. Hello, I am an Nigerian prince. You have been selected to receive my family fortune. Oh, man. Uh, public chat channels. What are you gonna do? Anyway, um, 25 million for like the the transfer. Um, it's, that's not cheap, but you know you're gonna be making money once you buy it. Uh, that guy got it in 
presumably just a loot drop from something. Um, and, you know, as are lots of the other stuff that's in here. The, uh, the other being the infiltrator. And I would s probably argue that there's some overlap between scavengers and infiltrators. I think the scavenger might be thought of as more of a PvE thing, but not really. Also, I don't know what warn messages have to do with scavenging. Uh, but then infiltrator is, I would say, definitely geared towards PvP. Um, you got expose access logs, um, balance inquiries, and transactions v1 that's transaction logs okay yeah to to view uh, um like the good stuff is all down here in the million uh gc categories uh certainly you'll also notice that some of them uh have different colors there are different levels of these they're not all created equal basically um they do things like expose more of the access log or uh, have a shorter cool time cool down time in between their uses, things like that. Um, so there is sort of an emerging market that is being built here. I would say it's not 100% in place or balanced yet, but it's getting there and it's getting created by the user base. Uh, the other archetypes um, that the, the game institutes are the architect and um, the executive. The executive focusing on corporation creation and management and the archetype focusing on writing scripts so these altruistic people here that have created you know like ada for example um has a breach t1 script has a channel script to make it easier to type um i think this full sec list returns only full sec npcs so that you don't have to question whether or not something is a uh, an NPC script in here or something player created. Um, DTR has a ton of stuff, manuals, libraries, uh, lists of interesting channels. All of this is being created by the, the player base. And, and I, I think that's awesome. The amount of possibilities that exist with the players being able to literally write code within the game is, is great. And there's a place for people that don't have those skills. I truly believe that. Um, I, I don't really plan on learning how to program to play this game. Like that's a little bit beyond what I think I'm gonna be doing in my spare time. Uh, if I wanna like dive into how to learn something about computers, I'll probably be doing that for my job. They'll pay me more because of it. You know, that that's kind of my rationale there. Uh, but I think that as the infiltrator, you still have a lot to offer and to be doing. Um, while there are a ton of T1 lock cracking type scripts, as you get into the more complex locks, they've not yet been breached by, uh, by computers. They require things that um, computers and scripting just aren't good at guessing. And the upgrades that the architects have to buy or are generally based around like how long the code in their scripts can be. Uh, and that limits them quite a bit as well. You know, they're getting upgrades in order to get more coding space in order to make more complex scripts. Um, there's kind of two sides to it all with scripts being written to break into locks and, uh, you know, more complex locks being created. It, it's kind of all over the place there. The architect basically, ends up being a cyberpunk blacksmith and is able to build both weapons and armaments to uh, to kind of attack and protect people that he feels are worth protecting. So all of that, you know, within a corporation style environment, uh, I think has a, a lot of room to, to grow and a lot of room to have some very cool emergent gameplay. And I, I look forward to see exactly what, what there is to come. Um, you know, we're less than a week into the launch of the game, and we're already very, very far along, uh, at least as I look at it. Um, like, some of this just blows my mind. All right, guys, I'll tell you what, uh, that's kind of what I wanted to show off in this episode, is just the, the basic idea of, hey, here's what you can do um, on the other side of the VLAN. You know, these hacking puzzles and how to get started with them. I've still got some crazy, like, tier two puzzles that I need to try to figure out 
there's a very ARG sort of experience going on there with uh, trying to solve all of that. And I think that's what I have to offer. Um, you know, I'm working in IT. I am kind of a professional problem solver um, every day at work. And that actually fits into the way the game presents problems um, probably closer than you would think. All right, guys, I tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and drop off of here for now as I get distracted by, you know, all the crazy stuff that's going on in chat channels and uh, have trouble focusing. So uh, that's going to do it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, feel free to subscribe. There's lots more on the channel. Leave a like or a comment if you have anything to say about this or any of my other videos. And I will catch you guys next time.